Hello and welcome everybody. Kingdoms here. No prizes for guessing who or what we are talking about today. We're talking about Team Vitality. By the way, if you uh, notice that guy like staring into your soul from the background, just don't worry about it. It's fine. You'll you'll be okay. Now, Vitality obviously came into 2022 with a lot of fanfare and excitement around the team as the core or part of the core of the previous Astralis lineup, the one that dominated basically two years of the game, won back to back to back to back majors, uh, and just generally set a precedent for an era that we have never seen before and probably won't see again. Yeah. The core of that team, so that's the coach and two of the players, obviously hooked up with the French lineup Vitality, including the best player in the world, or one of, in the form of Ziwu. Now, obviously, there were huge expectations for this team. The organization itself explicitly said the team was put together to win things. This team is fully intended to be a team that can compete for majors, compete for big tournaments, and they should be held to that standard as such. Now, in general, I saw a lot of excitement around this lineup when it was put together, and the consensus seemed to be that it was just going to be a success. That, yeah, no worries, these guys will find their feet, they'll win tournaments, they'll be really good, they'll be a top three team in the world. I was a little bit more sceptical, I've got to be honest. Uh, you can go back and check out my video, I'll try and link it somewhere. Um, but at the time, I said that I foresaw a lot of potential issues with this lineup and that it was by no means the kind of easy home run that I think a lot of people assumed. And I think already at this stage in the lineup's lifespan, we're starting to see some of those points come to fruition and hinder the team and hold the team back. Now, one aspect of the team that I actually did not expect to be a problem and kind of is, has been the form of Ziwu. Now, if we take a look at some of Ziwu's recent form, obviously you're seeing quite a few maps in the red there, including his worst ever performance on LAN. This game here against Gambit, 0.32 rating, 3 kills, minus 15 differential, that is an absolutely abysmal map by anybody's standards. Now, I'm not trying to get overly excited about a single map, but in general, Ziwu, kind of since 2021, has not quite been the same player that he was when he first entered the scene. I think he spent a couple of years very much battling with Simple for that title of the best player in the world. Come 2021, it wasn't really even close. And coming into this year, as you can see, by his very high standards, it's from sort of this Evil Geniuses game onwards, which these are the performances from the year. It's it's not been anywhere near his very, very high standards. Some standout series, both positive and negative. So obviously against MIBR, not the best opposition, but pretty good. Uh, against Miles here, again, with a stand-in, not the strongest opposition at the time, but a pretty decent performance overall. But there's been a lot of, of struggles for Ziwu, some struggle maps where if you kind of scroll back through his career, like, look how much less frequently these, these struggle maps kind of appear. Like, yeah, you get, like, a series where he probably didn't have his best, and, you know, you get a couple of maps here and there, but the amount of red that we're kind of seeing here is already extraordinary for a player of Ziwu's standard. Now, this isn't anything to get super concerned about just yet. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to fear monger. I don't think Ziwu's done so. I'm not a guy who's like, hey, four shit maps, Ziwu, get him out of here. No, I'm not that guy. However, Ziwu is held to high standards and rightly so. He has proven to be a superlative talent in his time in this game and is definitely, in terms of raw ability, skill, whatever, one of the best players on the planet. And this is not some crazy dip in form. This isn't some, you know, falling off a cliff. No, he's still putting in good maps. He's still Ziwu. It's just starting to become a bit of a concern for me. The other problem is that I think this Vitality team has always been built around Ziwu, but in a way where I think it's overly reliant on Ziwu to get playmaking and fragging done. 
there is some more stats just for the team that kind of support that idea that Ziwu needs to be more of a playmaker, make things happen. But just by the eye test, when Ziwu doesn't frag, when Ziwu doesn't make mad plays, when Ziwu doesn't take control of a game, Vitality really, really struggle to find a win condition. Again, there are more stats that we'll talk about later in this video that, that support the idea that there's not the best calling, I don't think, on Vitality. And maybe Extaz was more of a vital part of that. But, but the basic point is that Ziwu needs to go ham in order for Vitality to function. And Ziwu isn't going ham often enough for Vitality to function. Like, if you look, the green, Ziwu's played well. Green victory, Ziwu played well. Green victory, Ziwu played reasonably well. The losses that are coming this year against Heroic and Gambit and Ents, Ziwu's played badly in all, all of these games. Uh, he played okay in this Gambit game. Yes, obviously, a player's stats look worse when his team loses, but, I mean, if, if, you, if you just scroll back, like, here, look, Defeat played incredible, but lost. Like, played pretty well here. Okay, yeah, had a bad map and lost, but, like, played really pretty decent here, still lost. The fact of the matter is, is that Ziwu's level has definitely dipped. The, it's very noticeable in defeats because I think Vitality just can't win if Ziwu's going to play like this. Ziwu's current form is a little bit of a problem. The next major issue that I see with Vitality, and this is actually, I think, pretty common with some of the fresh teams at the top of Counter-Strike right now, and, and is a, an ongoing bit of work for any new team, is the map pool. Now, if you look at these stats, they have played an absolutely overwhelming amount of Inferno Dust 2 Mirage, which are probably the three maps that any random CS player on the planet will be most familiar with. If you pluck at a random face at level 10, odds are Inferno Dust 2 and Mirage are maps that they know how to play. And basically, pug teams can pick these maps up and play them. So it requires, I think, much less work than the other maps do. So on the one hand, yes, it is somewhat understandable that Vitality are leaning towards these maps and are playing a lot of them. On the flip side, I would have expected Vitality to be looking to play more Nuke. I'm surprised that they're not. Both the Danes and the French at various points have liked this map a lot. So it seems a bit bizarre that Nuke isn't being incorporated into the mix more. But there's a part of me that kind of feels like it's a worrying sign, almost, that Vitality are heavily leaning on the Pug maps. You can call that an opinion. That one isn't necessarily backed up, per se, by fact, but it does just a little, little tiny alarm bell starts going ding, 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 when a team is only playing Pug maps, especially a team like Vitality, who've got mad staff around them, supposedly an incredible coach. Yeah, I don't know. But if we start to actually dig into the maps now, Inferno seems to be their home map, seems to be the map they want to pick, and they are having some struggles on Inferno. Not so much struggles in terms of getting like smashed on it. As you can see, their biggest defeat is actually in an OT game. So even the defeats they've had have been usually relatively close. But if we dig in to the stats a little bit more, as you can see, at Katowice, they lost Inferno every single time, and it was their pick every single time. Again, here at this ESL Pro League, they squeak over the line against Sprout, a team that, let's be honest, they should be beating pretty convincingly. And then if we go over here, another one of their victories against FaZe at Blast. FaZe, you know, won Inferno against G2 in the Katowice Grand Final recently. No slouches on the map from what we've seen so far, but... Again, squeaking it over the line. Of their victories, only three of them were, like, good to convincing. The rest of them, so five, looked shaky, could have gone either way, or were pretty solid losses. Like, this one to Gambit, yeah, it was only four rounds, but it, it was more convincing if you actually watch that game. Gambit were never going to lose it, particularly when they got onto T-side. So Inferno, which is their most played by a long way and seems to be a map they're leaning towards being their home map, not the most convincing. I've got to be perfectly honest. The win rate is solid, but when you dig a little deeper, a couple of those wins could have very easily been losses and a couple of those losses or a couple of those near losses, sorry, are not against the highest caliber of team. Looks a little bit concerning. The other two maps, obviously, overwhelming they've played are Dust2 and Mirage. Their Mirage has been crap. 
It has been awful. They have lost every single Mirage game that they have played with this lineup and haven't really got close in any of these games. Generally decent opposition, Gambit Heroic and G2 are all going to be like sort of top five-ish teams probably in and around that area this year. Um, Ents on the rise, difficult to know exactly where Ents are at the moment, they've just changed the player, they were on the rise last year anyway, so we need to give that some time to see where Ents sort of settle in the hierarchy, but this is a problem, like Mirage just, they seem willing to play it, they're obviously not going to ban it, Ancient is their permaban. And this is awful. Like, this is really bad. This is... The Mirage needs a lot of work. And let's just, like, like this. Wow. Wow. This is a stat that we will get to later. The Dust 2 seems, like, fine. But again, when you dig into it, they have played two not great teams on it. Played G2 and one. Fair enough. That's a decent result. But again, lost to Ents. So, Again, you look at this and like three wins and a loss, you're like, okay, your Dust 2 is looking okay. But the wins have come against two teams they really should be beating every day of the week on any map. One of the wins is legit against G2, fair enough. You can have that one right at the start of the year. So how much you want to read into that, I don't know. But yeah, this loss against Ents, I think, kind of affirms that idea that their Dust 2, despite having 100% win rate on it leading up to that, yeah, it's not convincing. And even in the case where you're like, our Dust 2 is pretty good, I don't think that Dust 2 is the best map to have as your home map. I don't think it's a consistent enough map, particularly if you're approaching it from the T side, to be a home map. And really, you can't talk too much about the rest of their map pool. Um, they've played Overpass once and lost it. Uh, they scraped a win on Virgo against Maus, and then they beat Maus again on Nuke. Like, you can't really talk about these three one-off maps. But what it does start to look like is that, yeah, that map pool is very, very shaky. Inferno, okay. We can probably confidently say they're a decent Inferno team. Mirage is a fucking disaster. Dust 2 is probably not as good as the 75% win rate looks. And then these two are just one-off maps and you can't read too much into them. Um, so, yeah, the Vitality map pool looking shaky at absolute best the only map i would confidently back them on against you know like the best teams in the world is inferno and even then they've lost it a few times recently against the best teams in the world and been run close by a not so good team yeah the map pool is looking like a bit of a mess here for vitality if i'm honest uh so far now the final uh kind of piece of statistical information that i want to look at is um this the kind of ftu table that we do over at hltv now if we just scroll this down obviously not the biggest sample size in general but vitality i've sorted this by round win percentage down here so this is already not good your round win percentage being 46.2 percent you're not winning any tournaments if your round win percentage is that low and we've also got to look at some of these other stats and i think they start to give you a little bit of an inkling of exactly what is wrong with vitality um let's start with the positives so their opening kill let's uh let's just do this to get them towards the top here they are so their opening kill percentage is pretty good and their multi kill percentage is pretty good like if you look at like some of the other good to decent teams on here like it's comparable it's not too bad. Obviously, some of the teams who've had better starts the year, like G2, Gambit, you know, Heroic, are all ahead of them. But it's not terrible. Basically, their firepower is looking serviceable. Again, I think it does a little bit allude to the fact that they're struggling on firepower versus teams like Heroic, Gambit. I think these teams outfrag them. I think overall firepower is not actually stellar for vitality i don't know where this idea came from that like zebu was getting the firepower help he needed dupree has had an amazing start in vitality way better than i think you could have predicted from a t statistical standpoint megisk is just okay masuta and apex are gonna bottom feed most of the time yeah it's not as if they're a heavy firepower team but it it's been serviceable so far this the these stats are absolutely fine it's it's decent and these are good as well. They're trading as many of their deaths as Ecstatic are the only team like beating them basically on trading. So they're, they're trading well. And their utility is fine. Good in terms of um, grenade damage. So like you'd almost say like their fundamental, the absolute fundamentals of the individuals are, are okay. 
The fragging and the mechanical and the aim and stuff in that sense, from what we can see, seems fine statistically. And the eye test again says Magus, Dupree, and Zewu particularly are doing fine from the fragging point and firepower point of view. They're trading reasonably fine. So the absolute basics of like entering sites and stuff and, and playing in terms of teamwork is, is seemingly fine. And the utility, again, part of your CS fundamentals, your flashes and your nades, that all seems to be okay. The pure fundamentals, which we should expect from these veterans, these guys who've played in the scene for a very long time, a couple of them have won pretty much everything there is to win. If Zonic as well, obviously, if you include the coach. The problem lies here. Particularly this. What this says to me, their 5v4 percentage is abysmal. So they're getting a decent number of opening kills, not converting it enough, particularly compared to pretty much any other decent team. You know, the teams below them in terms of 5v4 percentage, Copenhagen Flame. This is surprising from Entropic, but their like, sample size is bigger and... Yeah, so whatever, but basically these are teams that have, like, Sprout have kind of struggled in the Cat V's of playing and now at EPL. They're looking a little better, but it, yeah. Complexity, dog, start to their lineup. It's not been good. Fnatic obviously had their problems. Copenhagen Flames obviously kind of have fallen off and only really play up to their best standard when they're playing against better teams. Vitality are one of the worst teams around at the moment i think in the mid round i think that is what the eye test has been telling me and these stats i think bear that out opening the round they're okay they get opening kills it's not the end of the world and in terms of raw firepower they've got enough going for them multi kills are happening they're trading okay it's their mid round calling and playmaking that is really suffering and again to tie back in what i was saying at the start of the video i think this alludes to ziwu not being the playmaker that he can be and vitality are really suffering for it i think also the fact that this alludes to and supports the idea that their mid rounding is not so great i think if you want to see a an example of this by the way go look at the inferno against gambit at katowice when Gambit get on the T side, they basically pick Vitality apart in the mid rounds. Outplay the living shit out of them. It was a clinic that Gambit put on of mid rounding and Vitality couldn't hang. Another reason, I think, for their mid rounding potentially being an issue, you have to look at the language slash cultural barrier. All communicating in English, I think you have to assume that it's it's a problem and that it's not working 100% yet and that they are going to need time for that to settle in. I don't think you can underestimate how long it might take for, especially when all five of the players are communicating in a different language to what they're used to. The Danes obviously used to communicate in Danish, the French obviously used to communicating in French. It's not even as if some of the team already communicate in English or have experience on an international roster, no. None of these players, I mean, Magus has some experience on international rosters, but years and years and years ago, none of these players in the last few years have had to play in English. And I think it's showing. The other two aspects, and I don't want to read too much into these because I think you need more behind the scenes information to be able to definitively say whether this is an issue or not. I don't know how good Apex's calling is. His mid-round calling seems to be not good, and I don't know if he's getting support with that or not, but yeah, his mid-rounding doesn't look good at all. So uh, you've got to question Apex's leadership, I think, a little bit. You have to put a question mark on it. And potentially, Xtaz as a coach. Um, maybe he was more vital to the functioning of this team than we realised. Again, that is more of a speculative one. It's difficult to know when you've swapped out so much of the roster. There's so many other variables in play. But these numbers definitely suggest to me that the core thinking and functioning of this team is, is flawed in some way. And because these things to me talk to speak to mechanics and fundamentals. Whereas I think this, these two columns is where I think the better structured teams, the better integrated teams holistically it, it, rather than just the basics of teamwork which is trading making sure you go out 
the right spacing behind your teammate, making sure you pay attention to the info he gives. Th this is more nuanced and subtle and complicated and vitality of falling short. Got to be brutally honest about it. We'll just end... Um, let's get this out of the way up here. We'll just end by looking at this scoreboard. Um, this is obviously from the most recent loss Vitality suffered. They've just lost right now to Ents. And, I mean, you can look at those stats for yourselves. Um, it wasn't a good series for Vitality, obviously a struggle. I'm not convinced this Vitality lineup are ever going to hit the heights that the names and the fanfare around the lineup when it was brought together suggests. I just don't think it's going to happen, quite frankly. I, can they be a top 10 team in the world? Yes, I believe so. I think it is at least a roster swap away from being able to contend with the best of the best. Uh, I think ideally you would swap Misuta for someone who's going to have more impact. Or you would, to be brutally honest, swap Apex for an in-game leader. Like, I, I don't know how much I believe in impact apex is a, a pure in-game leader just because now that x has is no longer behind him suddenly the the team is not looking so good other reasons potentially you know exist but yeah i just i just don't believe it i don't see it i don't i don't think this team let's put it this way vitality will not win a major this year absolutely not and i don't think with this five-man lineup i would not be surprised if they didn't win an event in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna put it on the line now Vitality will not win an event with this five-man lineup. I'm locking it in. Boop. Locked in. I hope that you enjoyed the video, guys. As per the usual, like it, leave me a comment. Helps me out with the algorithm. And if you did not like it, I haven't thought, I haven't thought of a joke for this one. Hmm.